the crew worldwide From Kali to Twitter Real hardcore fans Boxing ass niggas Consistency cops Police the views We'll pull up receipts for any debates you choose Shout outs to Clan Arky for the dope production Ring gang stay with the best discussions yes. Ring gang radio yeah, yeah, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. <clears throat> I'm your host for tonight, Pat Wolf, your New England representative. You know, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do? It's a lot of Del Boss, a.k.a. Instead of Work of God, the GOAT artist, the Soul Wars creator, Ring Game Radio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, also, you know, we got you know we got another person in the house. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. We'll be on back, standing to go on. Shy City in the building. You already know what the fuck it is. Raindrop available everywhere. Nigga, go get out of that. That's what it is. Yeah, welcome back, bro. You know, this nigga's been out here, you know, doing what he's doing. You know, hustling and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to have him back on the show. You know, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. All right. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. That's what's up. So, uh, so yeah, fellas. Uh, so we're gonna lead off with some of the boxing that we, uh, you know, from last weekend. I mean, it was a it, it was a weird terms of schedule. I mean, there was boxing on Friday, and then there was nothing on Saturday except you know Paulie Malignaggi and his and his uh, fucking bare knuckle boxing. You know. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll touch upon that. We'll, we'll touch upon that shit a little briefly, and then we had PBC. You know, on Sunday, you know, so it was kind of weird. You know, it was the rare Saturday where I could indulge in my vices, because you know, because you know, because unfortunately, you know, boxing, you know, keeps me out of trouble because I'm kind of old to be getting into 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 fuckery. But every now and then, it rears its head, and you know, on Saturday nights when you know when it's nice out and we're and you get paid, you know, you go out and you do things. So, um, but yeah, luckily I got back safe and sound. So uh, yeah, Friday um, it was the it was you know it was the zone where it was the rematch between um, Alberto Machado and Andrew Cancio for uh, the real WBA Super Featherweight title. It's not Tank, you know. As much as the WBA wants to play them games, Tank is not the legit champion. Andrew Cancio is, and last and that night we were just to see whether or not it was going to be a fluke. Or was it gonna be some, you know, was it gonna be, or was Machado gonna actually right his wrong? Um, well, he didn't do that. Him, Machado did not right his wrong. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, basically, you know, as we all, we all know, the Mexican and Puerto Rican boxing rivalry is probably one of the strongest in boxing. You know, them, them motherfuckers is fanatics, you know, when. You know, so depending on how depend how how high the stakes are, you know, and and even if the stakes aren't high, some you know some of them you know just you know they don't know how to, they don't know how to act. So this card, <laughs> this card was this card was interesting because, you know, we had you know we had you know, Machado who is Puerto Rican and you know he's trying to get back his title. Unfortunately, it didn't go too well. Um, LB, did you have to see the finish for this fight? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, um, it seemed like he was he, he was doing good at first. Um, you know, he was pumping the jab, looked like he busted up uh, Cancio, but you know, he just kept getting tagged and just seemed like he got overwhelmed. And then you know, the body shot came and it was over. Like it seemed like it was almost over before it got started, but we saw it get started. Right, exactly. Yeah, so that's, sometimes I mean that's what it is. But a perfectly well placed body shot. Jesus, what the fuck was that? You know, sometimes a well-placed body shot, you know, can end the fight just sudden. You know, I mean, we saw just off the top of my head, you know, Leonard Doran getting, you know, getting his inside shook up like Jello from Artero Gotti, and you know, it happened to be the last fight of his career. That's what, that's what it is. All it takes is one body shot. I mean, but Machado did, he got up though. That's the thing, he got up. But right, but he just you know the body just said nah 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 bruh we we yeah. don't tonight. Yeah, like they shut down on him like he he couldn't do no more. Yeah, so I mean, and when I look at that knockout, I'm thinking to myself, I, mean, I, I probably is thinking that Machado probably struggled to make the weight, and you know when you when you try to when you try to boil down to a weight and you take a body shot like that, 
So sometimes, I'm so, yeah, sometimes that's what all, sometimes that's all it takes. And I, and I just have that feeling that's what it is. Because Machado's been, is a pretty durable fighter. But I just, I just. He got a long ass body, man. And exactly. Trying to make that weight. He 5'10", and you were fucking down. What, super featherweight? Like, yeah, come on. 130 pounds, man. Yeah, nah. And, 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 and that's what I'm thinking. Like, I mean, everyone wants to be Daniel Corrales, but sometimes, like, even Daniel, even Daniel Corrales couldn't make them lower weights anymore. You know, and it's just like... They got him in the end, you know. It, it, it beats everybody, man. You, you got to know when to move up. Right, you know, because like I said, you can't, I mean, yes, yes, I know you want the advantage and maximize your advantages, I mean, but, you know, when, when you know, when biology calls, I mean... You know, as much as you want to keep your belt, you can't like force yourself to make these, you know, these crazy weights because it's detrimental. You know, you're five ten, you five ten, you oh, you gonna have an advantage up to like fucking what uh what uh, uh middleweight? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what's what's what other? How many advantages you need, nigga? You five ten, like <laughs> shit. That at one thirty, I'm like, come on, bro. Like, I'm five ten. Like, how the fuck I feel? Like, I gotta <laughs> fight heavyweight ass nigga. Are you you up here bitching about some fucking lightweights? Nah, nigga, move move your ass up. Right. <laughs> I mean, but he he did say in the interview that he yeah he think it's time to move up. So you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the first yeah, fight. Yeah, because I mean, I, the first fight. Though, I mean, I I thought because it was just legit got him. So I don't think it was a, I don't think it was conditioning. But this time, second round, I, I thought, he, yeah, it was, it was conditioning. Yeah, you know I mean, the, it was too much for him. Yeah, not, and the style, just the combinations, just yeah. up and down, just he, he overwhelmed them. Like it, it, it don't seem like he could do nothing with that style. Like, nah, I think nah. if he fought a third time, you know, he would get got again. Just maybe if it was at a higher weight, you know, it would just take him a little longer. Right. Yeah, you know, so um, yeah, like I said, it was a setup fight. Like I mean, look, look, it was about to, you know, it was about to do something, and then, you know, bam, it was over just like that. Um, so yeah, Machado's most likely going to go up in weight. They should. Cancio will continue. I mean, obviously, I mean, what Cancio needs to do now is try to call out Tank, you know, because you know, and you know, try to try to settle this WBA shit. With a, with a super featherweight that'd be a, be a good ass fight and you know it'd be nice to see Tank in there with a, a good opponent again you know right you don't see that that often and he, he's too talented to be fighting these damn you know, you, you know yeah. jobber of the week yeah. club and showcases all that shit dude. you know so yeah. and uh oh but I also do want to mention another fight on this car too and it has in uh the co-main event was a bunch of light flyweights, you know, that's 108 pounds, you know, and usually like the, you know, the light flyweights is not a popular division in the United States for various reasons. I mean, it probably hasn't, it probably hasn't had real, any, any real attention since the days of Michael Carball or some shit like that. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a popular division, but them little motherfuckers, they, they, they throw fades. They throw some serious they give you some gems, man. And I know the fights you're talking about, and yes, yes. that was that was a good little scrap. And and, and yes, that stoppage was kind of like ah, yeah. But but it was it was a good ass fight. And just I hate that I had to be in the fucking last round, fucking with with, with a thirty seconds left type of shit. Yeah, it, it, it was Angelo Acosta who was the he was the ring champion. His his record was insane. He was twenty and one with twenty KOs. You don't see that type of pro, you don't see that type of prolific knockout streak at lighter, which you don't. I mean, wow. you know, he was, he was killing him. Yeah, he was. And his power, and then his opponent was only like fourteen one with like seven knockouts, and he he was oh excuse me fourteen and eleven with eleven knockouts. Excuse me. So, like we, I was thinking basically it was just gonna be a fight where, you know, Acosta would probably retain, and Acosta happens to have had the recognition of being the last. Well, he was the last active Puerto Rican champion, you know, and um, so that's kind of crazy because Puerto Rican Puerto yeah. Rico. Yeah has kind of fallen off on the boxing level for over a couple of years uh, badly. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he was the last remaining one. And it was, yeah, it wasn't a good fight. I mean, 
Acosta, you know, found himself in him with an opponent who could actually take his shots. And they were throwing some fades. Like, they were both punching through each other. Like, it, like it, was, it was, like, it looked like a bunch of probably, I mean, they were punching, like, you know, fucking, like, uh, lightweights out in there. Like, they, they, they that, the punching was, like, ridiculous. And the last, in the last round, though, it got stopped. Um, unfortunately, Acosta, I think, was up on all the cards, too. But he, but it, he had been, but he had been stunned all through the fight, and that, I think the left hook though had him, you know, it froze him. Like he, he was, he was walking like Frankenstein briefly, and the referee saw that shit. That's the reason why he stopped it, you know, because he was like, although, I, I, although as he stopped it though, I think the Costa kind of snapped out of it. But you know, sometimes you, you got air on the side of caution, you know. It's, you yeah. Know, it, it wasn't the it wasn't the worst stoppage of the weekend though, but we'll we'll hell get into no. that. Yeah, hell no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, like Puerto Rican uh, Puerto Rico lost its last active boxing champion, and what made it funny is Miguel Cotto, you know, was in the audience and he was salty. He, I mean, to see two Mexican fighters body his countrymen. In the main event, co-main event, he was salty. You know, he had he, he had a look of disgust on his face. You know, it's like He's like who are these niggas? Like shit. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I mean, shit. It, 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 because it, his, I mean, he was he was co-promoter on Golden Boy, so that's the reason why he was there. And he was seeing a spot, and he saw a fighter. I think Acosta's his fighter, I believe, and he got bodied. You know, so. Uh, yeah, Puerto Rico. I don't know what's going on, man. You know, Puerto Rico is just like before. Is is it's still a boxing hotbed, but you know they they're, they're just not on that championship dark, level. It's the dark ages right now, man. Yeah, <laughs> Danny Garcia is something to you. <laughs> kind of. Danny Garcia, that bum. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> What? He's so he's so boring. That nigga boring as hell when he fight. Yeah. It's like damn, yeah. when is he gonna go down? Type shit. He probably won't. He'll probably never. Oh, Dan Garcia. I mean, I'll give him credit though. That boy has a hell of a chin, and he'll probably and it'll probably take him years for him to actually touch canvas. You know, and you know, cause uh, he absorbs them shits. But outside of that, you know, that boy is struggled to me. In the, he wasn't, uh, yeah, I ask Adrian Granados if he struggled. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. Then we can ask Mauricio Herrera if he struggled. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we talk about 2019. <laughs> don't, 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 don't bring up those damn uh, uh, the robbery from them nah, four nah, or five years ago. Nah, nah, I, I, nah I'll, I'll be cool on that. I mean, there, there'll be plenty of time. In other times where I can bring up that particular fight. But, um, so yeah, like I said, Puerto Rico, man, it's just, I seem like they're in the dark ages right now. I mean, I'm not sure what their talent is like on their island right now. Any, you know, pros any real prospects over there, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, I mean, I'm pretty sure probably maybe in the next couple of years we'll probably have another Puerto Rican champion, you know, but it's, it's, it's just kind of shot because, like I said, they, they're, they've long been a staple in boxing. You he know? Makes what, what about him? Or are we off that? You kidding me? I'm the one who I've never been on that, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, when when, 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 when got KO'd by a shower, I knew shit was a wrap. Before he actually got KO'd by a Mexican, no less. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, so so it's really okay. I mean, I ain't trying to get on the country because you know, like Felix Trinidad, one of my favorite all time fighters. So, you know, but there's only one Felix Trinidad, so yeah, you know, and, not even, and, and not even Miguel Cotto, gonna re Miguel rebound, Cotto. you know, they're gonna get another chance, yeah, at some point. I mean, I'd, I'd say give her a couple of years, someone will, the cream will, so, someone will rise to the top of that and they'll, and they'll snatch a ball in one of these, these divisions, so um. So yeah, that was the zone card, and then 